Hi, Ray G here, and today we will be learning how to predict the image formed in front of a concave mirror using the Ray method. But before that, let's learn certain key terms and concepts. First, what is a concave mirror? So it is a curved mirror with its reflective surface on the inside of the curvature of the mirror. Now, we could represent it by illustrating uh, an arc, which is part of a circle, okay? Now, that circle, or of course circles, have a center, okay? Now, after illustrating the center, or indicating the center and the arc, draw a line which passes through the center into the mirror, okay? So now you have two points which are represented. We have the center of curvature, which is the center of the circle, and the vertex, which is the uh, intersection between the principal axis and the arc of the mirror. Now, after that, we need to mark the midpoint okay, of the center and the vertex. So the midpoint is called the focus. Okay? So the focus is in between the vertex and the center. Now, after doing that, we are now ready to predict the image. Before we proceed, we need to understand how the light beam reacts in front of the curved mirror. We are going to represent it using two rays, the incident ray and the reflected ray. The incident ray is the ray that represents the light beam from the object to the mirror. And the reflected ray is the ray that represents the light beam as it is reflected by the mirror. So first is, if the incident ray from the object okay, is aligned with the focus, it will be reflected through or with the principal axis. And if it is uh, or if the incident ray is parallel with the principal axis, it will be reflected through the focus. Now, in any instance that if you need to draw a incident ray that passes through the center of curvature or is aligned with the center of curvature, it will be reflected back through the center of curvature. Okay, so let's start with our first example. So the purple arrow that you see here is the representation of the object. Uh, you, we usually use an arrow to denote the orientation of the object. So the object here is above the principal axis, so we could say that it is upright. So next is we're going to illustrate the incident ray starting from the tip of the arrow to denote okay, the location where the beam started. And we could also... Uh, uh, determine okay the tallness or the 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 size of the object later okay now the incident ray that we first drew is uh, parallel with the principal axis so according to the concept if we're going to have an incident ray which is parallel with the principal axis it will be reflected okay through the focus okay just like this one. Okay? So, next is we can proceed to the next ray. If the ray passes through or is aligned with the focus, okay, what will happen to it? It will be reflected parallel with the principal axis. Okay? Now, here we could already determine what kind of image is formed. Where is it? It is where the reflected rays are or do intersect, okay? So where do they intersect? At this point here, okay? Now, how do we interpret what we have illustrated, okay? So first is that the image formed or the intersection formed 
Okay, on the bottom of the principal axis. So what does it mean if it is formed at the opposite side of the principal axis? We could say that the object is upside down. Okay, because the tip of the arrow, instead of being at the top, it is now the low. Okay, now, what else could we tell about the illustration? Okay, you will notice that the size of the image formed is relatively smaller than the actual object. Okay, so the object is upside down and it is smaller. And finally, the image is formed in front of the mirror. So it is in front of the mirror instead of the back. Okay, now what does it mean? It means that if you place a screen on that location, an image could actually be projected on the screen. And images that can be projected on a screen is called a real image. Okay, so it's again, it's upside down. It is smaller and it is a real image since it could be projected on a screen. Let's have another example. So what if we place the object somewhere between the center of curvature and the focus? What do you think would happen? Okay, so again, let's start with the incident ray. Okay, so the incident ray, which is parallel with the principal axis, will be reflected through the focus, just like before. Okay, and then the incident ray which is reflected or is aligned with the focus will be reflected parallel with the principal axis. Okay, just like so. Again, notice that the reflected ray intersects. So we now have the location and the point in which the tip of the arrow is projected or is formed. Okay, so let's first draw the arrow. Okay. Now, how could we interpret what we have drawn? Okay, first is that the image formed is again uh, under the principal axis. So therefore, we could say that the object is still upside down. Okay. Now, the image, as you notice, is relatively bigger. Okay, it's relatively bigger than the actual object. Okay, so therefore, the object or the image formed is larger. And finally, the object or the, the image formed is in front of the mirror. So therefore, if you place an image or you place a, a screen here, Okay, the image will be projected on that screen. Okay, so it is therefore a real image. Okay, now let's have, okay, one last example. Okay, now what if the object is placed between the focus and the vertex of the concave mirror? what will be the image formed? So let's start again by illustrating an incident ray, which is parallel with the principal axis. Okay, let's do that again. Now what happens when it, in, it uh, hits the mirror? Again, it is reflected through the focus, just like that. Okay, now, this time, you will notice that the focus is on the uh, other side of the object. So are we going to draw an incident ray from the object through the focus? No, we're not going to do that because that ray will not be reflected on the mirror. So instead, we need to draw a line which is going to the mirror 
and is aligned with the focus. So it should be aligned with the focus. Now I like to do that by starting at the focus and then making sure that it is aligned okay, with the tip of the object and towards the mirror. Okay, so just like that. So what if it hits the mirror? Again, it will be reflected parallel with the principal axis. Just like that. Okay? Now, I want you to notice that even if you extend the reflected rays on this side of the mirror, they will not intersect. So, does that mean that no image will be formed? Okay? Not yet. Okay? What should we do? If the reflected ray, even if they're extended, does not meet, make sure that you draw uh, the virtual rays. So what are virtual rays? So virtual rays are the rays opposite the direction of the reflected ray. Okay? And they are formed behind the mirror. Now usually, virtual rays are represented using broken lines. So let's use a broken line to represent that. Again, what is a virtual ray? It is opposite of the reflected ray. So just like that. Okay, so let's make sure that we get the opposite direction for both reflected rays, just like that. And notice that the virtual rays intersect. Okay, so this will be the place where the uh, image will be formed. Okay, now how do we uh, predict or conclude what we have, okay, what we have drawn or what we have illustrated, okay? So first, again, draw the arrow. Make sure that it goes to the, goes to the principal axis just like that, okay? Now, the arrow or the point where the tip of the arrow was formed is still above the principal axis. So it is still above the principal axis. So what could we say about this image? So this image is still upright. Okay, so it is still upright because it is located at the same place or the same place where or relative to the principal axis. Okay, now however, there are still certain changes. Now, notice that the object and the image, uh, have, uh, the image have changed, okay? The image is relatively larger than the object now. So, it is now larger, okay? And finally, what kind of image is formed? Now, the image that is formed is not in the front of the mirror. Therefore, if you place a screen in any point, okay, in front of the mirror, no image will be projected. So therefore, it is not a real image. So what kind of image is that which is projected at the, or which is formed behind the mirror? It is called a virtual image, okay? So again, the image formed if the object is placed in front of the vertex and, okay, or between the vertex and the focus is upright, larger, and it is a virtual image, okay? So that would be all. However, before I go, I will leave you with a uh, problem, okay? What if the object is, pl is placed exactly at the focus Okay, of the mirror, what do you think would happen? Will there be an image formed? Okay, what kind of image will be formed? Okay, and why do you think that kind of result have happened? Okay, make sure that you explain it. Okay, on the comment section below and uh, base it on what we have learned today. So... Uh, with that, just make sure that you put a like and subscribe to this channel and goodbye for now. See ya!